need to remember. Uh, sweet, thank you so much. Uh, nice to see you, Smiley Beaks. Uh, ha happy to have you back. Um, today is gonna be today's gonna be a fun one because we're just we're just rigging along we're just finishing uh lots of things are finishing up it's the first of august so that's pretty exciting um my the first portion of my workshop just concluded last night and it's going fantastically <laughs> you'll have to let me know if anybody out there is looking for uh demo reel help or um, help with your resumes, help with your LinkedIn profile. I think the resumes and the LinkedIn are a much bigger uh, project as I anticipated. So uh, really, really looking forward to um, exploring what that is uh, for people. Yeah, so if anybody out there is watching and wants to send uh, a message regarding your demo reels or your uh, resumes, CVs, however you want to call it, however you want to write cover letters, or the big question is, are cover letters even still relevant? Um, yeah, LinkedIn profiles, all that jazz. Uh, very, very, very fun stuff. So yeah, we just concluded our, the first portion of the workshop. So it was kind of like the, the, the whole production team looking at a demo reel and telling uh, like giving suggestions on like how to improve it. How, what does the studio want to see? How can you how can you stand out or, uh, above everybody else um, to get your to get your foot in the door for a re uh, an interview? So very very cool stuff. I'm looking forward to uh, running it again in the future. Um, Cause yeah, my face is I'm smiling so much my face hurts. Like I don't know if you can even tell, <laughs> but I'm. Yeah, it's going super well. So really excited to uh, uh, finesse it a little bit and give it another shot. Um, yeah, so as we get into today, it's gonna be fun stuff. We're just gonna finish Louise Gaddia's girl number seven rig. She's so close to being done. Um, it's funny, sometimes I open up this file and I'm like rip roaring, ready to go, no word I gotta do. And then today I'm looking at it thinking, where did I leave off last week? Uh, this this week for me has been such a big um, so many things have happened I don't know if anybody caught uh, my post <laughs> yesterday about staying focused with my foot in ice water but I I had a I had a surfing accident <laughs> my first surfing accident uh, and I probably gonna lose a toenail so that's what that was about uh, but definitely I mean it really worked I was very focused <laughs> while my foot was in the ice water so I on a hot day one the worst <laughs> maybe don't have like a round bowl I was thinking it was a super dangerous uh, if it was to tip by accident if the chair was to knock it or whatever um, the surfing was very fun <laughs> the surfing was a lot of fun the surfing was too much fun <laughs> you know <laughs> Um, in, in, uh, in Montreal, we have a, let me see if I can find a picture of it, uh, V-A-U-G-E, de, G, G, Y, uh, Montreal. I'll share my screen, but, uh, Montreal's surfing is very different from the surfing that you imagine and so the only reason why I had never been able to go was because of this um, and it's not like I'm great at surfing like I love surfing and my like I think I've mentioned it before my whole like this office makes me feel like I'm in a wave because I love surfing and the ocean so much so I've got surf paraphernalia in front of me <laughs> making me feel like I'm by the water um, but, uh, yeah, the surfing in Montreal is totally different than, uh, what you consider because we have what's called a standing wave and a standing wave is a wave that doesn't move. It just stands there. Um, and it's, it just waves. So it's just a constant loop of water. Um, and it's very interesting, but it's very, let me see if I can find a picture that's, uh, I guess this is probably... This is probably as clear of a photo. Let me share my screen. Let's see, can you see? Yeah, so 
Um, there's basically two spots to drop in. This spot right here where there's a bunch of guys standing. This is kind of like the, this is the harder, the harder entrance. So you basically swim up to the wave and then you have to swing your board so that you are, like you have to swim up to it. Then you turn your board so you're, it's facing the proper way. And then you basically like reverse park yourself into the wave. It's very difficult. It's very technical. Um, but there's another entrance, uh, farther, farther, like probably a couple meters, um, uh, I guess up river. And so from there you, maybe this is a, this would, no, that's a very small picture. Uh, yeah, here it is. This is, this is kind of the, the walkway. Uh, so you kind of, you swim out from right here. So you just kind of go up that way. Uh, and then you back up, you turn your board and you back up and you basically swim backwards <laughs> and let the water take you, let the current take you. And then the goal is to, um, catch it. Uh, and it's, it's really the weirdest thing. Cause you, uh, you basically right here, I don't know if you can actually see there's a dip in the wave. So when you hit that dip, you, you can feel your board moving, uh, and you kind of feel like you're going to nosedive into the high end of it, but that's when you know uh, that's that's your marker. So from there, you just swim. You gotta swim, you gotta slow yourself down. It's kind of like hitting the brakes. And then if you slow yourself down fast enough, that's what uh, stops your momentum to catch the wave. But if you don't slow yourself down, um, you just go right through it. Uh, <laughs> and then some, somebody else's turn. So it's, it was a very surreal experience. It was not, uh, t it's not typical surfing. Um, it's still very exhausting and I'm hoping to, to keep going, but at some point I went to push off a rock and I like, it's all, it was all slimy. So I pressed down with my feet and then one of my feet just slipped and I, I thought I just sprained my toe, but, um, I couldn't feel anything while I was in the water cause it was kind of cold. Um, but, uh, uh, when I got home, my, my foot was turning purple and it was very, <laughs> it was very gross. Uh, and it could, but you know, your first surfing injury could be a lot worse. So we'll see if I, uh, if I lose a toe or not. And, uh, sometimes it looks good. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> the adrenaline. Definitely. Yes, definitely. Uh, definitely. I, I'm, I feel like I'm, um, I got a lot of good news today too. So I feel I actually can feel like my I can feel like my adrenaline's up again just from all the good news, um, which is funny because like, I think you feel I think you feel adrenaline in your body like everywhere, but I can really feel like my shoulders are really tight, and I'm sure that's a mix of all the good news today and then um, also surfing. <laughs> so yes, it's been it's been a it's been a good it's been a good month. Um, let me close this. Uh, what was I else was I gonna say? Yeah, and then I got good news. My friend is going into. She's gonna be having a baby like today or tomorrow. So um, she's going into labor. So I'm really excited. Yeah. Well, it's not my baby. It's <laughs> but it's a really good friend. Uh, and uh, I'll be the another aunt. I'll have another little. I'll be another. I'll be an aunt for like the. Oh, I don't even know. Uh, fifth. Is it, would this be the fifth, sixth, seventh, maybe the seventh time, seventh, seventh time over as an aunt. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I'll be able to meet that baby, uh, at, by before the end of the month. So I'm excited. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get on to rigging. Let's get into this. So, so the summer has been, the summer has been good. Okay. There's no complaints. All right, Smiley Beaks, anything uh, good with you? Have you had uh, any good news recently? The good news can't just be all here, all on my side. Harmony training on the weekend, very nice. Is it going well? Oh, very cool. Yeah, really awesome. Sketch out the idea for your own rig. 
Do you think you're going to build a whole turnaround? Or do you think you'll just do uh, a couple views? A slow class can also be good. Sometimes a class can be too fast. <laughs> so a slow class can be good. <laughs> Obviously, there's a healthy, mi a healthy middle, but... Yeah, start small. That's a that's a good idea. Start small so you can finish it. You want to you want an easy win when you're new at stuff. You want easy wins. That's how I felt about surfing to be fair. I had um the it took me a long time to get out there uh just because it it's just a it's just such a weird thing. And it's funny because when I think of people learning how to animate, I I can still compare that to me wanting to learn how to surf. Um if that makes sense. So yeah, yeah, learning new new things is always trouble uh, is always like is always the same the same feelings come up no matter what it is that you're doing. Um even Mabel, I invested in Oh, Mabel, you're fine. I don't know what that was about. I invested in uh some of these talking buttons. Not all of them are being used right now. Hey. You're okay. Oh, you stink. You're gassy. Whoa, you let a big fart out while you when you barked. Um but yeah, I'm trying to get her to learn these buttons, but she is not into it. <laughs> but we'll get her there. We'll get her there. She's not the type of dog that likes anything new. Oh, what is going on here? What's the matter? Hey, you're okay. What's the matter? You're acting funny. You're stinky. You're really stinky. You're okay. She's so stinky, it almost feels like she's pooped on the other side of this desk, which I don't think she did, but very stinky. Can you lay down? She's looking at me like she wants more treats. Um, you learned a, a few tricks, your cats learned a, uh, a few tricks like speak. But she only understands the command 50% of the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're, when you're training animals, the repetition is such a... The repetition and the consistency is so important. Um, Mabel, Mabel uh, she knows commands, but I don't know if she knows the commands or if she's just looking for repetition. Um, or like, she's look, like, she knows certain things will get her more attention like when I have her shake a paw because she can shake paw and she can do the other paw as well but um when I have her sit and I just want her to sit she'll start pawing at me like she knows that's the next trick and so it's not quite what I'm asking for but she gets there and so she's kind of pulling that move when we get to the buttons so right now I'm just trying to get her to 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 to, to touch it, which is um, hard. <laughs> she just kind of lays over uh, and gets frustrated and then just starts to like tell me to, to pet her belly, which uh, not what we're going for, but we'll get there. Oh, we got Nightbot ch chiming in. I don't know what that is. Pre pressing a bell that is a hard one what about a what about a bell on, well I guess if you had a bell on a rope a cat would probably just go nuts right <laughs> I can imagine that would be it'd be hard to stop them to from doing that instead of the other way yeah if we, they're the buttons work pretty cool and you just record you put the batteries in you record what do you want it to say and then uh, you have to teach that they are uh, it's a, it's a, is that just a positive experience before you can really get into the training? So we're still trying to get her to touch the button and just be okay with touching the button. Uh, but today she had a moment where she, she slammed the button for the first time. So maybe that means that, uh, there's a little bit of hope. There's a little bit of hope for Mabel. I, I'm hoping that she'll tell me she's gassy. <laughs> I want to train her. <laughs> To know. I think she just farted again. <laughs> You're so gassy. <laughs> oh man, this room. <laughs> Smells of cedar and dog farts. <laughs> uh, did you have a good weekend, Smiley Beaks? 
Uh, besides uh, doing the work for... Is it sunny over there? Or is it kind of starting to get a little misty? Too short? Yeah. They always are. <laughs> Alright, let me get... Let me figure out where I was. Did I leave myself a note in the rig? This one is this pink one. Cut body. Nope, that's just a note to tell me to cut something. Do, 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 do. Update in the Photoshop files, the neckline. I don't think we need to worry about that note though anymore. I think we were able to to update that. All right. These ones, sleeves. Okay, let's move these over. We won't need them all, but. get rigging along here. All right, so sleeve shadow, which is going to be, this one is the sleeve, this one is the, there's nothing there though. Okay, I think we need to clean this one up, yeah get rid of some of these. Alright, so now we can select We've got our shirt shadow. Okay, so we don't need a spit, not need a sleeve shadow. Maybe this is the I think we need the sleeve shadow. Put this over here. We could set up somewhere else. Let's do some. Let's do some pivot points because I need to see some. See how this is connecting. So here we got the arm. So let's do everything. We've got our everything gets its pivot point, uh, and then we can start from the the bottom part. So we got the hand is connected to the upper arm. So let's give the upper arm a peg, uh, do, 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 do. and then the upper arm is connected to the upper arm shadow. So actually, let's do let's do this one, and then we'll connect this one to the hand. All right. So then we've got our sleeve, our shirt line, our sleeve line. Uh, we've got our sleeve pattern. Oops. All right, and then we've got our sleeve. So I'll just connect the sleeve pattern to the sleeve, and then we'll peg up to the sleeve line, and then we'll peg up to this to the arm in general. Actually, I'll steal this name. All right, and now we can do some renaming. You learned how to set drawing registration points and the advanced rotation points. Oh, very cool. Uh, what's the difference? What is an advanced rotation point? Because that's not a term that I'm used to hearing, but it doesn't mean uh, it doesn't mean much because everybody describes things differently. All right, so let's call this our master. Okay, upper arm master.
upper arm main and sleeve. Um, one was art layer and the advanced rotation tool was for the pack. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, you learned. Uh, so I, what I'm not doing the drawing pivots. Um, no, that's cool. Uh, the drawing pivots, because you're, you're located around Vancouver, right? They don't use drawing pivots so much around Vancouver. It's still a pretty cool tool. Yeah, so you're talking, uh, where are my, my points? Where are my tools? Uh, so this is your drawing pivot tool right here, drawing pivot uh, that you set on your drawings. And then um, your advanced rotation tool would be this one. And when we go to set the pegs, because I always, I always add my pegs after I do all my drawings. Um, I just like to do that in case I accidentally nudge one and then something shifts into the wrong place. Uh, so I try to avoid I try to avoid that as much as possible. Um, so I like to add them at the end, at the very end. Uh, but it's it is a, probably a harder workflow for people um, that are just starting to learn the software. It's probably easier to add pegs right away. That way you can kind of move stuff around because when you don't have a peg, your drawings are are locked, which is what I like about it, but might not be exactly what you're looking for. But for Vancouver, um, there's, I don't know too many studios in Vancouver that use drawing pivots. So you can keep that in mind, uh, that setting pe pegs this way, uh, or the way that I would show you, um, would, would be good. Did you learn that you can set multiple pegs at once? because that's a really big time saver. No, it would actually be that you can say that that's pretty similar. <laughs> you could say that's a, a few things that are very similar. Um, that and having your symbols hold drawings. Uh, I find that that's very similar to the drawing library and uh, or the drawing substitution. The drawing substitution window, let me bring in uh, here, was basically uh, built to resemble Flash. Wasn't built to copy or anything, but um, yeah. Oh, so you learned how to copy and paste. So do you go into the coordinates for the tool properties, the layer properties, and then you copy and paste the, pe the peg pivots? That's a good skill to know how to do that. I got a shortcut though, if, uh, okay, let's, we got that. I think I renamed them all. Let's do this one. Neck. I don't think I need the neck. what's connected to what the shirts the main thing so the shirt is connected to the shirt pattern let's just connect the pattern like this uh, the shirt uh, the shirt that's the skirt texture um, and the skirt so we'll do this and now the skirt will automatically move this skirt texture the shadows are not moving but um all right we got our our shirt is connected to the pattern that will automatically move with it uh and then we will peg up to the we'll add the neckline so now the shirt is moving with the neckline um and which one is the shadow? This is the, this is, I need to duplicate this. I need, uh, okay, so now my shirt is going to connect to the shadow. Is that how I did the shadows? 
over here. Let me just double check. Mm. Okay, I don't have the, yes I do, I pegged up. Okay, upper arm main, uh, I could say upper arm main, upper arm uh, SHD lets me know that, lets me know that the shadow is attached to it. So now we can do this. Yeah, so the shirt. Let's do this one is the shirt main. This one is the shirt plus shadow. I think that's the top, M-A-S-T-E-R. Okay, and the shirt shadows should only be seen through the shirt. Right now it's seen through the skirt. Let's duplicate this. Shirt texture, copy, let's do this. Instead of that shadow being one piece, let's break it into two, and then there's a shadow for the top and a shadow for the bottom, and it'll be a little disjointed, which will probably make it look a little bit better. Won't look it make won't make it look so mechanical. <laughs> Always create drawing files. Skirt shadow, not the shirt shadow. So now the shirt has its own shadow and the skirt also has its own shadow. So they'll be able to they'll be able to go a little bit further that way the in the animation uh, side of things. Just a little bit more flexible. I mean again, this rig doesn't have to be super flexible, but oh, Mabel just farted again. Gassy. So gassy. Oh boy. Skirt S H D. All right. Uh, okay. So that might actually even be just our lower body in general. <laughs> we can put our lower body on the far far right side uh, and put the arm closer to the left through the through the body itself. Oh, uh, hover over them, copy and paste them to the new. So when you're when you're copying the your that you're talking about the drawing node. So when you set the drawing pivot, you copy the drawing box to the peg so that it reads the information inside the drawing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's, it's, it's a neat, um, th there is a problem with that technique when you go to animate. Uh, and that's why a lot of times people are, are using pegs just in general. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so this, this is the, those is the pros and cons. There's pros and cons of every method. Um, and I think this is why animators or I don't want to say they prefer it, but I think studios prefer animating on pegs because when you're animating on pegs, you're isolating the movement to the pegs. 
um, and nothing pops. Um, especially when you're building rigs like 360s. So this is kind of why the, 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 the technology has kind of evolved towards 360s. Um, but with drawing pivots, because the rotation is set inside the drawing, when you are animating things, let's say you animate something and you change the drawing from one side to the other. So like, let's say like this hand, like my hand, right? I'm gonna try to keep it on screen. So on this side of, the, of my action, my hand is open, you're looking at the palm. Let's say I'm slapping somebody, all right? This is gonna be a perfect slap. So we've got this, and then when you do this, now you're looking at the back of my hand, right? So if that's the action, you've got two drawings. So if your pivot points are, um, your, your pivot points, if the, it's, it's, a real, it's a real issue where, I guess it's, it's a more of an issue for arms and limbs and for legs, uh, because if the width is changing on things, then when you're animating them, your objects pop. So if your rotation is not perfect in the drawing layers when you're setting these pivots, when you go to flip your drawing, instead of you having like a clean like animation tween between the two poses, sometimes you, you go from like, let's say from here to here, but sometimes what'll happen is you'll be going from here and then, you know, your drawing could be misaligned or like the thickness of the limb could be off. And so you kind of have to like move the, move the drawing where you want it and then you can keep going. So to hide that, <laughs> to hide that, you always want to flip your drawing in the middle between the two poses. So you've got, you got pose one, pose two. Um, and so somewhere in the middle, if you've got five frames in the middle, uh, you want to flip it at the fastest point for animation. Like you, that's how you hide that pop. And sometimes it doesn't show, sometimes it shows. Uh, so it's a little bit of a, so, but the good thing about the, the, the drawing pivots is that your whole character uh, is, you can reset it at every angle. Um, again, this character is only one angle. So she's a bit of a, she's, she's basically built on in her spot. But if you're going into rotations and if we were to rotate her, um, we'd be animating her into those poses. And, you know, subsequently you can't reset the, the poses after because they'll just, everything will just bounce back to the first pose. So the good things about drawing pivots is you get to reset every design or every angle. So every angle will always reset to its proper location, but animating, there's a little bit of a trick involved. So very happy to, to, to let you know about that. Um, but if you're looking for jobs too in Vancouver, you want to practice the pegs, uh, uh, rigging for the pegs. <laughs> Uh, who's throwing the, who's throwing the, who's training? How are they, how do they have people training that? Is it Toon Boom? Is Toon Boom training them? Maybe he's from the industry uh, in Vancouver or from somewhere. Oh, I don't know that person. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. There's so many people now. The industry got so big. <laughs> the industry got so big. All right, what is this? Uh, this is a low band, let's attach this. So we've got the, uh, where's the braid? Where's the ponytail? The ponytail is connected to the braid plus the band. Is it gonna go like this? And then this? Mm, I don't think this is right. I think this needs to be.
we're going to the ponytail. This feels backwards. Uh, let's give it its own peg first. And then this braid plus band. No, I don't want braid plus band. I want ponytail. To the low band. this to this to this perfect okay yeah that's what I want all right we've got the t ponytail master that's what we want okay yeah it was a bit backwards all right so ponytail main ponytail uh, I guess we can call it the master Let's call this one the braid master all right so now the braid is at the top the ponytail is in the middle and then the ponytail uh, chunk is down there. Okay, there we go. We've got the hair knot. Let's connect these bigger networks now. will connect to the to the hair I have I'm seeing that I've got some areas where I've pegged up and some areas where I'm daisy chaining it's not a really good thing to have a mix like this. Mm, this is this is me uh, doing these things at different times, having different standards. <laughs> uh, okay, I think I could be out of California. Not sure. Let's do the union though. Yeah, that's fair. Um, well, sorry, what's your question? Why not? What? Why? What's the? Why? Why not? here and then we'll connect the we'll call this the head hair that connects everything Headband will be connected last because that's kind of a hat. So I actually should. Um, I could actually push this over so that the actual hair is closer.
Mm -hmm. We got the eye. Uh, this is the face. There's the mouth. We got the nose, wrinkles, lip wrinkles. There's the mouth. Labeling these, let's use better colors. Um, wait, let's see, let's go pink mouth. Let's go. We don't have a white, let's pick yellow. Oh my god, Mabel, <laughs> could you hear that fart? It was loud. <laughs> uh, why not? Why not Daisy Chain? Okay, so. Um, daisy chains are okay for very small, um, instances. Um, and so, uh, what a, what a daisy chain is a term that's used for connecting, um, uh, what are they, uh, extension cords. So when you need a 10 foot extent or when you need a 50 foot extension cord, but you only have five 10 foot extension cords then what you do is you basically plug in an extension cord to another extension cord to another extension cord to another extension cord and that's your daisy chain. Uh, so the reason why we don't daisy chain, and I used to work at a summer camp, so uh, a kid's summer camp, so this was actually a big deal. <laughs> no daisy chaining um, extension cords because it's a hazard, it's a fire hazard, it's a tripping hazard, it's a fire hazard. Um, all kinds of hazards. So daisy chaining is something like a term that I use for um, rigging up pegs. Uh, harmony is more powerful when you peg up. So um, here I'm, this is an instance of pegging up. So there's no daisy chaining here. The, the mouth and the teeth are connected by a mouth main peg. Um, if I wanted to daisy chain the mouth to the teeth, then I would do this and then I don't need this peg. Um, but what that means is when I move the teeth, they'll move, but when I move the mouth, the teeth will automatically move with the mouth. Um, and so the, the good thing is about it is it's like kind of a bit of a animation hack, but when you're animating at the level of professionalism at the studios in Vancouver, uh, they don't want, animators don't typically want daisy chains they don't want things automatically following things like that um, there are some cases where this does uh, this does change but typically people want things moving by themselves and then moving together so it's just a very different way to animate when you're daisy chaining things too what it also means is if you move the mouth and the teeth were supposed to be in a, in a spot then you have to bring those teeth back. So that's something we call counter animation. So every time you have to counter animation, it kind of slows an animator down. So you wanna try to keep the areas of counter animation um, to a minimum. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not possible to prevent it all, but you wanna kind of minimize the amount of counter animation. So when you're daisy chaining, you kind of have to pick and choose where you're going to use it, if you're going to use it. Some people just say no daisy chaining at all. I daisy chain a little. I daisy chain for like small things that I find that it wouldn't matter for animation. Um, something that I would feel comfortable daisy chaining would be the sleeve on the back of a shirt. So like sometimes we build these, the backs of the sleeves so that you could, you get the, you get the feeling that you're, you're looking at a character in um, 3D space. Uh, but at the same time, you're not always using that piece. So I'll daisy chain those to the arm. So it's always following the arm um, and it's always accessible, but it's not quite, uh, not quite there. Um, other things that I don't mind daisy chaining are like lines. 
So a detail like this, this little squiggly, that's something that I would consider to be fine. Sometimes we're animating, or sometimes we gotta rig a character where, like in this character, her sleeves are really big and, and puffy, so they're kind of floating on top of her arm and we just sandwich. But in, uh, in, a, in an outfit that's like more like my sweater, like it's tighter to the body, sometimes we just have a, like a square, we just build a square, and we'll put a deformer on it, obviously, so we get that shape of the curve of what type of the, like, is the arm coming at you or is the arm coming away? So they give you that perspective. But it's really just a square with a floating line. And so I'll daisy chain that. That I would consider to be uh, something the animators don't have to fight with too much. Um, but to, like, to say, to base your whole rig on daisy chaining, that's when you get into problems. That's when you get, like, you can't... You wouldn't want to say, oh, um, when the head moves, I mean, this is a, I mean, you could daisy chain the whole network. That's technically right now where this is a, a big daisy chain. Uh, like you want that, you want the eye to move with the whole head, but you definitely don't want, like, um, you wouldn't want to set it up so that when the head moves specifically, your whole eye moves, right? Because that's that's that would be a really weird configuration for an animator. Um, so little little things like that. That's 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 daisy chaining, <laughs> uh, and it's. Uh, yeah, it's weird. If you rig a whole character with the daisy chaining method, it saves you, it can technically save you a little bit of time. Like, let's see. Let's just do, instead of doing, where's my arm? Oh, this network is so big. Um, shirt, 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 neck. No, this is not the, where's the arm? So let's say, let's just do this. I'm going to. Oh no. oh no, turn that off, move this, I'll just move this to the side real quick, I'll show you another way. Alright, so in this case, uh, daisy chaining would look like, instead of doing, instead of doing like main pegs um, and master pegs and like pegging up to that system, um, your hand would be connected to the upper arm. Your, uh, wait, no, I'm doing this backwards. Your upper arm would control the shadow. It would control the hand. Um, your shirt sleeve would control the pattern. It would control the line. And then your sleeve would also control the the upper arm. So, uh, so let's say you want to just move your your arm; it's going to grab everything. Boop. And when you've got your, if you want to bend your elbow, but everything's moving. Do, 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 do let's say something like that uh, but what happens let's say you want to skew you don't want the upper arm to be cutting into the sleeves like this so you're gonna skew this and you're gonna skew this shape but you see how the hand is doing it as well so it's kind of um, it's kind of making the hand a little wonky I mean the pegs are not set properly so we're, we're gonna run into problems here it's not perfect but this is a very different network setup compared to this one so this one Let's cut these. So 
let's try it. We'll do that same pose. We'll just animate it a little bit differently. So now you have to remember uh, Harmony has the the peg the pegging up system, so the the hierarchy. So uh, if we wanted to go to the top of the push our arm that way, then we want to do our upper arm minus the sleeve, so we can. Oops, forgot to move my. So pivot point would be like that, and then if I wanted to like skew the arm so that it wasn't quite the point right now is not to affect the hand and maybe I would skew this up a little where is the and then I would put my hand I'd connect it so that's that's kind of um, that's kind of the thinking. Uh, that's that's what that would be like. It takes a little bit more work, but it gives the animator way more control because uh, it's a lot harder to get that hand to unskew after you skew it. So and uh, there's a lot like if a character if a if a if a rig design has lines, not a lot of people like skewing. But if there's no lines, which is the trend, <laughs> uh, skewing you can get away with. So, uh, fun facts. <laughs> A lot of fun facts. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> All right, let's reset these. Uh, okay. Let's see. Let's see where we're going with this today. I do want to... I do want to finish this. Um, I know we got to find some more designs and bring them in. We're, there's something's happening with the with the line of the hair and the red uh, the red hair knot. Um, but let's let's finish organizing this network. This is basically our upper body. Our lower body peg. Let me just double check. All right, we got the skirt texture. I don't mind adding daisy chaining the skirt texture. The, that the texture should be moving with the character. So I think the textures are fine to daisy chain, and maybe that's something that I can bring through the whole. Uh, there's really no difference. I could also put the skirt texture right in the skirt, which is kind of that way. I was uh, that way. We're not even animating it. It's just connected to the body. So let's 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 just let's just do it. Let's just introduce some of this artwork. Um, maybe it's not this one. It's going to be this one. So my line art is my shape, and then I'm gonna put my texture on the overlay. So let's see where it is, Control X. I have two textures here, so I've got this big one. So let's Control X, Control All X. Put this on the overlay, view. We'll go to this layer, control X, control X, put this on the color art layer, and then take this one, control X, bring this over, put this on the line art layer. Oh, she's gassy. She is so gassy. Wow. She's just ripping these farts. Wow. You stinky. You are so stinky. She hasn't been this gassy in a while. I hope she's all right. All right, so now we don't need the skirt texture, but we need to make sure we can see. So we're gonna, uh, that's our auto patch layer. This is the color art layer. Uh, there's our skirt base. Now we're gonna, it's only gonna be seen 
through the color art layer. And I want to use, I'm going to take this away, Control X. I just wanted that for the connection, and I'm going to join the overlay and the line art. So now the overlay and the line art texture is now baked into the skirt. I don't need this. Let's get rid of that, which is the standard method with the other ones. And then the skirt can be, the shadow can be plugged in in front. We don't need that composite. that's good and let's see what this is if we've got any more so we've got the sleeve pattern uh, so we can do the same thing with the sleeve pattern we can take do, 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 can we can cut this so instead of having its own thing we can put it right into the sleeve let's see there's a couple things in here though grab this one just this one. Oh my gosh Mabel why does this keep grabbing what is going on are these copied are these copies no they're not copies uh, this one what the heck Where's the artwork? Okay, what's going on here? Okay, I should have artwork on the line art layer and the underlay. What's on the underlay? Why can't I grab anything? What just happened here? Is it locked? Yep, okay, I locked it by accident. Uh, all right, do, 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 do. All right, so on the underlay layer, we have the, the little line for the shoulder. Uh, we have nothing on the color art layer. We have our, our actual sleeve on the line art layer. That's good. Let's put our pattern on the top. Let's move this down, Control X. Let's see if we can we can do this. Uh, let's see what else is in here. There's a uh, we got how many layers that are in here. We have this one. We have this little okay we've got two layers here that we need to X. Control V. Okay, we got those two patterns now. And we got this line, Control X. 
can put that here. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, okay, that's I think that's it. Ooh, this thing. Okay, control X. Let's try to bring this over. All right, so we've got this layer, this layer, this layer, and this layer. So let's put this here, but let's layer it below. This is getting a bit crowded, but I think it's okay. Um, actually, instead of that, let's take this one. And we'll just put it on top. So we've got technically we've got three patterns on top of each other right now, but it should be okay. I'm gonna I want to trim this. Um, ooh, but I don't want to trim it right now. Okay, uh, let's now we can get rid of this layer. Now it's all baked into the sleeve. I just have to make sure I gonna, this is now the cutter and choo -choo 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 -choo, control H. We're gonna cut that by the mask. So we got my overlay, all the patterns, all the textures. One, two. And they are only seen through the color art. Okay, let's double check because something's not working here. Uh, patterns on the overlay and liner are being cut by the color art. So patterns on the overlay, check. Under line art, check. Only seen through the color art, check. And then we've got our underlay. Oh, this is why. Let's get rid of that. That's why we get when we get specific with our rigs, <laughs> you don't want to plug things in from the node <laughs> it directly because <laughs> it bypasses everything. <laughs> and that's the trap. <laughs> That's the trap. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you making a surfer rig? I'm not making a surfer rig. <laughs> no, we don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want the. I don't want to get too into surfing because then that's when you burn out. <laughs> the, that's when that's when you over fixate on something. What is that? Uh, meals. You ever do that when you eat something so much <laughs> and then you're like, I can't touch it. I don't know if that's going to happen with surfing, but you know the feeling <laughs> and you're like, I've eaten too many sweet potatoes. <laughs> it's kind of what's happening with sweet potatoes um, right now. Ooh. All right. Yeah. So there we go. We now we've got patterns break uh, baked in. Let's see. We got the shirt pattern. It's kind of tricky because uh, these are there's so many patterns to this rig, so it's I don't know if it's I don't know if it's better to have them separated or have them baked in or or what. Um, I feel like I should probably ask Louise if that's something that he wants. Um, because the nice thing about having the patterns separate is if he wants to flash the patterns, like if he wants to make textures to l make it look like um, the texture is alive, uh, it's kind of easier to do that in a separate drawing. So that could be a thing. Um, but if he just wants to animate it and let the patterns be as they are, uh, then the other way is better. So like having them baked into the shape would be better because then that way everything's moving together. So for instance, I mean, everything will move together anyway, but uh, duplicating the drawings and moving things around in a separate drawing is easier than having that in the, in the sleeve, but it's not impossible. And I'm going to set this because there's only one drawing. I'm going to set it up uh, for him that to be honest, either one he could, he could, he could do. So we might as well, we might as well finish. Uh, moving all the patterns inside the rig and as long as there's one deformer and he doesn't add deformer shapes uh, or drawing new drawing shapes then one deformer will rule everything um, and that should be good for him yeah I think that'll be fine this this character is not doing too much let's see what's in this layer 
Uh, we got two layers on this one. So how many layers are in this one? We got one, two, three, four. That's the trick. How do you get four layers into, I kind of want to, I almost want to undo. Ah. This is why it's nice to work with the team because you go and ask, you say, what would you like? How does this work? Um, mm -hmm. Well, maybe what I'll do is I'll change it for the sleeve. So the sleeve, I'm going to backtrack. I'm going to take the sleeve. I'm going to go back to the way it was just for the sleeve. We'll daisy chain everything else, but because that area is so prominent for the character, uh, the sleeve, maybe even the skirt, I can leave separate. Let's see, let's double check all these layers. So we got this one, we got this one, we got this one, we got this one, and that's in here. So here we've got our, we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of that. And we'll get rid of that. And, oh boy, this better be the sleeve. Why is this on the underlay? Line art layer's got the shape, underlay's got the little doodad, and then this one should have everything, but this one is now empty, which means I accidentally deleted all those layers. <laughs> so undo, 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 undo. There we go. All the layers are here. This one is locked, but it should be this one that's locked. And now, there it is, we grab the arm. Perfect, that's working. All right. Uh, all right, so yeah, we'll do that, we'll do that. We'll, we'll allow, we won't, I'll, I'll, I'll bake in some We'll let some flash. Uh, one, if he wants something changed, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what that looks like. Uh, that's how, that looks good. Okay, so this one is the shirt pattern. We got the sleeves. We'll do it. We'll leave it like that. Mayball. Uh, hang on, I'm gonna blow the whistle. She keeps barking. So good. Good girl, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good girl. Can you lay down, please? Can you lay down? All right. Um, all right. So let's see. Uh, we definitely still have some texture that we got to bring in, but I got to find it. That's like a needle in a haystack, that stuff. So let's do something fun. Let's do, we've got our, we don't need the neck because that is part of the uh, body. Um, so we will attach the under chin to the, to the face, actually. Let's bring it, it's starting to get ramped. It's 
on spacing some things out. and face texture. Let's put this up here for a second. smaller so it's uh... okay now this is the head and then the chin For a minute. Um, all right, so then we've got the the head and the jaw, and this one is the uh, the head master. So then we'll do the head plus the chin. Actually, I don't know if it should. It would be that. It would probably be. Um, probably be the jaw. We've got our jaw, we can rename these, so let's say we've got our, our jaw. Then we've got our jaw main. Oh, this is our jaw plus our nose. I don't usually I don't usually um, attach the nose directly to the to the jaw like this. I don't know if that's necessary, um, but let's do the, the nose and the under chin attached to the jaw because that will that'll kind of give her 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 face can kind of flop. Um, I've kind of seen the rough of what this character has to do, uh, and so it kind of will it might <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna. But I think it could work. <laughs> I think it could work. Uh, so let's attach that. So let's go jaw main. And then this one is the jaw, nose, and under chin. under chin and then we have the the head master then we'll have the head plus the hair and then bangs and then we'll have The head plus the braid. Is it this one? She's going to have so many main pegs for her head. Uh, let's make sure these are stacked in the right spot so that when I set them, they're easy. If I set these pegs today, that'd be really great, and then you can 
check out this trick. It'd be helpful for you. Um, if you need to take a stretch slash water break, please do. Don't injure my hand. Oh, <laughs> you know, two hours is okay. Um, definitely okay. Uh, actually, what's interesting is when I was considering doing this uh, Twitch channel, um, one of the things that I wanted to help promote was like healthy computer habits. And so what you're saying is right on cue. And if Mabel has to um, go out, I always, not that I go out and grab water or anything, but if Mabel has to go out, I have to take her uh, for her health reasons. But um, uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was kind of talk a little bit about like, yeah, computer health etiquette. And there's like things like 20, 20, 20 rules, like every 20 minutes, you should look 20 feet away from your computer screen or where you're sitting uh, for 20 seconds. It actually helps reduce the strain on your eyes. Um, and so that was something that I was considering like every 20 minutes to, to, to like take that 20 second break, like to work with a timer. Um, but that's six interrupt uh, interruptions, <laughs> which is healthy. But you know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. She's she's had too many treats. I think that's why she's farting so much. Um, all right. So now we've got our head attached to the hair, and then our head. Um, what is this one? This one is the texture, so I don't want to put that anywhere yet. Uh, let's see, we're going to connect to our upper body. So this is our upper body peg. So let's bring this over. Oh, no, this is not our upper body peg. This is our headband. Oh my gosh, there's still one more. Okay this one is going to go, this is our upper body peg. And now I'm stacking these pegs on purpose for a really, really specific reason. Um, I have all these daisy chain, chaining uh, down here. Uh, dee, 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 dee. All right, so this one's the upper body because now we're attaching to the the head to the body. So this is our upper body. Upper body, and then this is gonna be the main peg. Oh, I take that back. We gotta connect her body to her arm. Yeah. Shirt Shadow Master. So this is gonna be the shirt plus arm. You can say body plus arm too. is gonna be the main character or the master peg for the character this is the top peg right there so we can call this one girl seven master So now it's connected. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, so many pieces in the head. Um, we can try to clean this up a little bit. It's feeling a bit messy. Uh, let's do this as final composite. Or we can even say girl seven, G-I-R-L-O seven. Composite. We can add a display. Uh, what's the what's the control I? No, control R. No. Uh, 
one more try. Uh, display. Control D? No. Uh, add display. this composite here that's kind of doing a lot so we could probably try to simplify this composite this, this composite here is kind of making everything pretty messy um, so we can see we got a lot of crisscross lines here again if we just bring a lot of these composites down it kind of helps the network look a little cleaner just because everything isn't so sandwiched so if we bring them down, the streams start to pull away from the network, which is probably a good thing. Uh, on this rig, it's probably good to use um, some waypoints. I'm just not a, I'm not a waypoint person. So that, this would be a good place for them. Let's pull these down a little further. Oh gosh, her farts are so bad. She must have eaten something weird. Yeah, I'm looking at you. It's like a very specific egg salad. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely go take some take some breaks. You are more than welcome. I I'm only doing this for two hours, so it's not too long. It's not too bad. You know, I prep. Uh, I. I get the water glass. I prep Mabel before um, before we start the stream. Take her outside. Try to get her a little bit of exercise. I'm not a big fan of the the green streams crossing so I feel like there's things that I could probably be moving uh, a little bit around but it's hard to exactly know where that to put this stuff um,
Um, when you, what do you have like any, uh, what would you call it? Um, rituals? Do you have any rituals when you when you do things? Maybe not like sitting at your computer, but like, or maybe it is when you're sitting at your computer. Like, what do you need to get your work done? For me, it's chapstick, <laughs> um, and my water. Speaking of. Those are, the, those are the things that I that I definitely need and post-it notes actually and nail files um, I'm actually always filing my nails <laughs> keeps me from biting them or at least it helps so I've got nail files kind of all over the place <laughs> all right um, all right, so I think that's good. Let's see. I saw that I had some daisy chains. What were those daisy chains on? Uh, the hair knot and the hair bands. Let's see. We got the hair knot, the hair braid, um, the headband. This is all hair. big This one, let's do this one green. And let's make some room for this, uh, this texture piece right here that's kind of floating in the middle of nowhere. Let's clean this up. So then we got the body and the arm. Mm. Let's just do this because we got 
such a small, let's label the whole thing, body. body upper body uh upper body mm, arm that's what it is arm a r m Let's do purple, upper body, arm. Let's do that. And then let's do this one blue. Like the real blue. We can connect where is the top of our sandwich there it is all right are you back uh smiley weeks i can set some pegs here but i'll wait until you're back you're back okay so let's do let's set some pegs All right, so this is a little cleaner. I'm still not quite convinced about these. We've got some messy uh, composites that are affecting the, the way that this rig is laid out. Um, we've got a couple crisscrosses that are, I'm not a huge fan of. I try not to do this. I try not to crisscross across, or if I'm crisscrossing that far, I try to figure out a way to, usually those pieces are interacting for a reason. So I try to set the network up so that they're not coming from so far, but there's so much hair. <laughs> the hair is not usually so big. Um, all right, so let's. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I did not label this one as the head. Let's label this one and let's set some pegs. All right, so this is what you've learned. Um, and so this is my quick way. So instead of copying and, well, I know you copy and paste pivots for drawing pivots, but for pegs, you can't really do that. You want to use the advanced rotation tool. So I love using the rotate tool. You can also use the scale tool, but I find because you're rotating things, when you're using the rotate tool, you can kind of, if you have to test, it kind of helps you test and then you reset it. Um, I'll show you what that, what that means. Uh, so, you know, this is going to rotate the whole character, obviously, but I can, I can kind of test uh, to see how it's going to rotate. So let's see, let's find the arm. I know this is not going to work, so but I can push the peg where I want it. I can say, oh, that looks great. I can test it. Um, and if I let go of the pegs, I can still reset it and put it back together. Now, I don't want to set that peg yet. I have a process. I'm going to show you my process. So I'm going to put that back. Every All my pegs right now are at zeros. Um, and I, that's for a reason. So, and then the other thing that I do is I stack the pegs. So if a, if a pivot point is going to share 
Uh, if a peg is going to share a pivot point location with multiple pieces in a rig or multiple pegs, I stack them. So you'll notice that I mentioned that the head had a whole bunch. Uh, the old way, we would have to go in and copy the, um, we would actually go in and copy the, uh, the pivot coordinates, which was, I don't know, and I'm a weird person. I used to like it. I used to, I would, I would find these little areas in the rig, the pegs that needed to share pivot point locations, and I would open up all the layer properties and I'd spread them out so I could see all the layer properties. It was like a game. <laughs> it's like a game. And I, and I loved it when I had like five pegs that needed the same location. It also kind of saved me time. So I think that's why I liked, uh, I liked finding those little bombs in the rig. But, um, when you have, uh, so for example, the, the head peg actually might be different from the whole head peg because our head and our jaw is a is in a different location um, or like our head and our jaw is separate and that pivot point's usually right in the middle uh, and it's different than where you where it would be like the base of your skull right where your head is actually rotating um, on your neck but having all of these pegs really allows you to work with the program because now you can grab all these pegs and set them as one. So instead of going through all your pegs one by one or doing like one ba big peg and then kind of moving them around um, or copying and pasting them over the, the layer properties, um, do, 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 do. Uh, what we can do is we can really uh, like highlight all the pegs and start moving them in the direction that we want. So this is what I'm going to do. So again, our we don't have a lasso tool when we're working in the network. We only have these boxes. So you could just basically click and drag. This is why it's so important to have a spaced out clean network and everything horizontal. So I'm going to get into I don't want to get to the head. I'm just going to do the upper body and the arm. So they're going to have different pivot points anyway. Uh, and so from here, I can just start to move things like so. Actually, I do have a circle for the, let's use that. So we need that. So now I can grab these again and I can say, let's put all, for now, we'll put all the pivot points onto this circle onto the center of that circle so they're all going to rotate from the from the upper from the from the hip peg really like you're where your upper body and your lower body meets that center of gravity right now we're just using that and I'll, I'll center it a little bit more on this section uh, now a couple of these pegs are going to change this one right here uh, the topmost peg I want to have that by the feet and in this case just like lower skirt um, and that way, if the character kind of needs to tilt from the bottom, it's, it's there. Uh, and then my lower peg is in the right spot. Uh, my shadow pegs, I can leave that there. That's fine. I've got another shadow. Uh, that's fine. So those are all good. I don't have to move those. And now our arm peg is going to move. So I'm going to grab all of the arm pegs. Uh, I'm not going to worry about, actually, I will worry. Uh, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure that's my upper body peg. I want that. Uh, my body peg, I want that to share with, uh, with, the body, with the body. I guess I'm gonna finish the upper body before I move on to the arm. Mm -hmm. Let's zoom in and make sure that we're doing these, read these pegs properly. All right, so we got our shirt shadow master, our shirt main, our shirt, all rotating from the, uh, the again, the lower, the, that middle center of gravity location um, the circle <laughs> our circle marks the spot uh, we've got our shirt pattern that might maybe that could get moved up that maybe that one can be a little more center maybe that can be at the bottom up something like that that's a little bit preferential uh, we've got our neckline I know I want to move that up here so let's bring that um, I don't know if I want to put that like here for her is it if we rotate it like that it's probably pretty good um, shirt shadows, uh, maybe we want to rotate that one actually closer. 
feel like shirt shadow should actually be like the arm shadow, but let's let's rotate that one from the arm and then that's kind of some hybrid. Uh, right now it's not moving with the arm though, so uh, then we'll backtrack, we'll go to our arm. In this process, you wanna be careful that you're not jumping all over the space. If you're jumping all over the place, um, it, that's how you miss pegs. So you don't wanna miss pegs at this stage. But what's nice is you can grab all the pegs at once and kind of move them where you need to be. It also lets you zoom in. Sometimes the pegs are kind of way off. Uh, like if you're working on a tall character and the pegs are all in the, at the middle of the screen, I keep looking at my belly button every time I want to think of like the middle of something. Um, but uh, if, the, yeah, if you're working with a really tall character and your peg is at zero, zero, the coordinates in the middle of the screen, then Anytime you have to move the pegs to the eyes or the head, you have to kind of like scroll down. So this method lets you grab all of the pegs all at once for the head, maybe put it up by the neck and then everything, because everything's rotating from the neck and the, and the head. So I usually put it there. Um, and then you don't, you can zoom in and then you only have to have that pivot point in camera there instead of all the way down here. So it allows you to see things better too. So it's, it's a very good way to work. Um, and it's very quick. So there's a lot of scripts. Um, I know that people do copy and pasting of pegs and scripts. And I think that's good if you're, if you're working on a character that's already done and you're adding things to it, then you can say, I want to copy the peg information from here and, and add it here. Um, but when you're working with the character from scratch, this, this method is way faster. And of course I'm talking and explaining things, so it's slowing me down, but, um, when you get into that rhythm, this is a very fast way to, you can set pegs in like five minutes instead of what used to take us probably an hour. Um, all right. So the whole arm, let's do that. Uh, let's do the whole arm. Uh, okay. So we got the arm master. We got our upper arm. We got our upper shadow plus arm uh, plus our upper arm. We can double check to make sure uh, our arm is not that long. So this is actually, we don't really have an upper arm here. We actually have a lower arm. I should probably call this the lower arm. I won't name it now. That's fine. Uh, we got the upper arm shadow. This is the, what is this? This is the, we'll move these three. So we'll bring all of these down. This is more of the lower arm. So we'll put it here. Let's say her elbow is like right here. Let's test the rotation. Let's see what happens if we put it a little lower. Ah, it's too low. You can see that it breaks. Maybe a little higher. I actually really like the first one. So let's leave that there. That is perfect. The hand. That's pretty good. Uh, and then we can do the sleeve. So that sleeve is in the right spot. This is basically our upper arm here, our sleeve. Our sleeve pattern is fine. Our sleeve line, we can put that more in the middle. All right, and now this section of the rig is done and we can move over. Do, 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 do. Let's see, uh, this is so big. Uh, this is going to be a tough one to do piece by piece. Um, let's do, I want to make sure I'm not getting stuck copying and pasting those peg coordinates. I want to make sure I, if I, if I do a chunk, I'm going to do them all. Um, the hair knot, the hair braid, this is probably going to work out well. I'll do the head. I think I've got this one, this peg. Set, I do. Okay, so let's move all these pegs to the, uh, to like the, the neck and the head, the head where the neck would be. Um, let's do, we won't do the hair. We'll have to backtrack. Um, and I want to, I'm hoping that my lines are kind of straight. So I get them. That looks like they're all grabbed. Okay, so let's 
move this here. Let's just do a quick, I know that's looking weird. It's looking weird because there's so many pieces attached to this, but let's envision just the head. The head. That looks like it could be a good spot. Let's go back. Usually what I do in profile, I use the ear. Your head, if you think of basic, of course, yeah, I love explaining. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. I love explaining. Um, I can't stop explaining. This is my this is my thing, uh, <laughs> my weird kink. Um, yeah, when you think of basic anatomy, where your head meets your skull, and this is really this is really important, and it's really interesting when you get to talk. Like, I got to go to a CTN convention and talk to the Disney's like animal, um, not their researcher, but it was like his. He was a biologist, and he was the person who was teaching the animators how the animals moved and I asked him I'm like what is the what is the number one uh thing that people get wrong that you see in cartoons and he actually said like where the head meets the neck <laughs> uh people get that wrong all the time so your head is pivoting through your ears so this this area right here so I always use the ears uh to mark where the head connects to the neck um so if I do that now it should be it should be good so like you can see it's that's that's pretty good um, so I'll just I'll do that I'll leave it there uh, and now we start to do the same thing that we did for the lower body and the body for all these pieces of the head so uh, we can we should jump over here I have to go back and name these pegs so maybe I'll just mark them right now just so I don't forget um, but here uh, that I want to be there, that I want to be there, that I still want to be there. Um, the other thing that's so important that these, these pivot points are in the right spot uh, is so that your character doesn't look double jointed. Um, so when you're, when, you have, when you're doing these manually and you're kind of moving things, so your, your pivot points start to shift and move around, and you don't want that. You want to prevent that. So this is, uh, this is a really nice way to, to make sure everything you, in one go, everything shares the same pivot point. So the head and the skull is going to be sharing the same pivot point. I just want to double check to make sure that, that that looks good. I think that looks pretty good. Um, we've got uh, the ear can, the ear can actually stay there as well. Mm. I'll put that up here because that's the that's the shadow, uh, the earring. So now we just get into like the little, we check the higher pegs. You always start from the top and work your way down. Never on camera. You start from the top, work your way down. And then that's when you get, when you're in the bottom level, this is when you, when you get to be more specific about where your pegs are. Um, but yeah, this is one of my favorite things to do. So Oh, I got a cutter here that's not working very well. I gotta have to fix that. Um, all right, in the jaw. I don't think that's good too. And I'm gonna have to cut those shadows to <laughs> make sure that they're not. All right, there we go. Uh, all right, so this is good. This is good. The jaw's in a good spot. We got the the under chin. This can be probably moved. I don't even know where you'd put. Uh, I don't even know where you put this. Uh, right here? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, maybe on the line. Maybe we'll we'll connect it to where it's connecting. I don't know what that's gonna look like. Uh, we've done the ear. Let's. That's when we get into the hair. We haven't moved that yet. So let's keep going. Let's do the mouth. So now we can grab, we can bring this closer to the mouth. Let's, I don't know if I want to put it right on the corner. She's got like fish lips. Let's put her right, put her right there. Uh, and now the mouth main and the mouth. And then I can move the teeth if I want to, but I mean, really, it's in a really good spot. Uh, then I can move the, we've got wrinkles. This is like a face detail make this a little bit smaller 
make this one a little bit bigger. Something exciting is happening outside. Um, all right, so we got our mouth, and now we've got these wrinkles, and we've got these lip wrinkles. These are like smile lines, and we've got these. Li we got two sets of lip wrinkles here. Uh, so let's take them out from the ear. Let's just put them. I don't even know. Uh, maybe from here. Uh, which one is the smile lines? Let's put those a little bit. I'm assuming they would kind of rotate from the top. So uh, we got this one and that there. It's kind of, I'm not really sure. So this is a, this is a broken, not all of these rotate from the same spot. Oh, I hear you, Mabel. Can you give me one minute? I'm almost done. Can you give me one minute? Treat bomb. It's... Don't eat this box. That'll, that'll buy us some time. <laughs> okay, and then the nose. Uh, we can just bring everything right there. I'll just put up the base of the nostril, and then everything will kind of rotate from the nostril. That's good enough. Uh, and now we can do the whole eye. And then next week it'll be like deformers and add the rest of the, let's see, where do we want to put this? Uh, let's put it here. Let's do the whole eye here. Yeah, next week we'll just have to add deformers and we're kind of getting to the end. Um, I will probably take, uh, August, this, I've had a busy month, <laughs> so I probably might just take the rest of the summer off and start up in September. Uh, it's just really a couple weeks. I've got a trip planned, as I mentioned, so it's just a bit too hard to to, to stream. Um, or maybe I'll fi try to figure out a way to do uh, uh, a stream that's just different. Maybe that's also an option. I'm going to be around a lot more uh, animators at this point, so we'll see what that looks like. We'll see what we can do. All right, so we got our eye, we got our pupil. Let's bring... Let's just put it in the middle. I have the feeling that's fine. Uh, we've got the eye bag. Let's put that there. We've got the eye winkle. Let's put that there. And you can see it goes much faster, much smoother. Uh, eyelid lines. Let's. I'm not even sure what to do with that one. Kind of. I don't know if that should be there or if that should be here. Maybe here. That's probably a better place for it. Um, August 12th to 13th is when the next Harmony class is, and we're doing more work with deformers, and I'm very excited to go through those more. Yeah, they're so powerful, and they've changed so much over, um, man, I remember when, I remember when there were no envelope deformers, and then I remember when envelope deformers could close properly. Actually, before they could close properly, <laughs> we had to, like, set them up really close to each other so we'd have to zoom in like get them so close um and then i remember uh them being able to close properly um so yeah deformers are a real trick and now like the, to me deformers are almost perfect uh there's really i don't know of any other scenario now that you can't do with the technology that harmony has like harmony is really like kind of completed itself but um, I'm sure somebody out there has developed something with the rigs uh, beyond master controllers now. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, deformers are super powerful and they are like, we're going to be using, um, I'm going to be putting on weighted deformers on here. They're super great. Hey, hey, Maurice. <laughs> nice to have you back. Welcome. We're just talking about deformers, and I'm so sorry. I have to send you the file still, the link. I am so sorry. I will send that to you. Um, 
I was just saying that it's I had a I had a busy I had a busy month. I'm like just starting to like recover. Uh, all right, eyelash shadow. Let's put that here. Um, yeah, you're gonna have fun with deformers. That's for sure. Uh, that's a that's a good one to learn. That is a very good one to learn. What is this one? This is the eye whites. We can leave that where it is. Um, top eyelid cutter. What am I, what is being cut right now? Let me double check this. This gets attached to the eyelid. I see. Wait a minute. Let me, okay, here we go. So I just kind of screwed up everything that I was saying. So I'll show you the old way um, of having to, to do this. So uh, I don't like where I put these pivot points. I kind of misunderstood. Like I kind of miss, uh, I don't even know why this is on a separate layer. I could just put this onto here, which I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to cut this, but I'll still show you what I mean. So as long as this is on another layer, so let's do it. Let's put it on the underlay. Hi, baby. All right, you're okay. You're so good. You're so good. All right, so I'm going to do that. Um, okay, you're okay. Relax. We're almost done. We're almost done. We're not, actually. We got the hair. Actually, okay, wait. Give me a minute. Uh, let me take Mabel out. Let me... One sec. Okay, Mabel. We'll be right back.
it was here. Uh, all right, now for the third time, I'm unmuted. Uh, Maurice, <laughs> that's a big adventure. We're gonna have to start supporting each other in this adventure because that's that's it. Um, and then I don't remember what I was saying before. I just fixed the eye, but. Uh, I didn't set myself up for success because this peg was off center. So when it's off center like that for me, I I know that it's not sharing. Like to me, it says this is not sharing the same pivot point, but it was. So I had to move this bottom cutter as well because it just makes more sense to to do this. It's probably a lot. It's probably too big. It's, I can always change this drawing. Uh, at a later date, it doesn't need to be that big, but it's basically like a big eye bag. Uh, but there we go. So there's, so now my eyes are a little bit more intuitive. Everything should work together. I'm excited about this little cutter here, but I'm actually really excited about this. This is going to be a really fun day. Like that's just one simple deformer is going to be able to to do that. So that'll be a good one. Um, and our eyebrow, I set that already. And this one doesn't need to be. Yeah. So now we've got everything. There we go. And now we'll do the hair. And we'll get to the bottom of this rig. And next week, yeah, we'll do deformers and it's going to be done. Uh, Alright, hair. Let's hair all at once. Oh my gosh, so much hair. All right, so everything is rotating from the neck. I'm pointing out my ears because you know why. It's the profile view. Uh, so the ears are the marker. Um, and we got the bangs. So let's put all this up here. We've got, we've got this hair cut in though too. So let me put this here. Uh, this hair side piece that probably will work, although maybe I don't know. Maybe here is probably a better place uh, than the hair lines. That can always go. This is. This is not the bangs. I want to be careful that I'm not being wordy here. I don't even know if that should be connected to the to the bangs. Let's do this. This color hurts my eyes, but I love it. Barbie all the way. <laughs> uh, all right, so we got the shadow. It's really not a bad thing that everything rotates from the same point. Um, the shadow might be a little like one layer too high. Okay, you're fine. Um, we've got bang lines. Let's put those up where we can see the the thing. We gotta cut that. Let's make sure that they're only seen inside the bangs. So they don't poke through. It's okay that they break. But we don't want them to we don't want them to poke through. Um, all right. All right, hair knot. Let's see what we got here. We gotta move all these. This is for the top of the hair braid. I think that this is actually gonna share the pivot point with this one, so this would go here. take care of this hair knot this big let's move all these down too because this is kind of squishing all right let's put all this here okay red band red band 
the shadow of the red band can go towards the back, the red band, uh, the bed, the knot, the red band knot, the red band main, this is not the red band main, this is the knot, the, the knot, red knot main. Okay, and then now we got the top and then bottom. Mabel, chill out, please. She's all worked up. Uh, hey, Mabel. No. Hey, hey. Come on. No. Come. Lay down, please. We're almost done. This is for real. We're almost done. Lay down. Lay down. Go lay down. Lay down. I don't have a reward. I'm so sorry. I don't have anything. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, hair braid. Okay. So let's. Uh, that could actually probably. Uh, let's see. We got this. We got this. We got this. Let's cut the braid lines. By the braid. This. Uh, I'm just deleting composites when there's only one thing attached to it because it's useless. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for letting me know that I was muted. <laughs> I appreciate it. I miss that often. Uh, do, do, do. Hasn't been too bad lately though. I guess. All right, let's pull those down a little bit. All right, ponytail. Uh, where is this low band? What's this? This is this is this, and then this. All right, ponytail. Shadow, ponytail, ponytail lines. Um, which probably do this. Yeah, there we go. That's. I think that's it. I think that. Oh no, headband. I didn't do the headband. Look at all these daisy chains. Oh, uh, might go fix those. Let me, let's do this. Let's put the headband in the head. Uh, the master, then we've got the hair band, the hair colors, I think that's okay. The shadow we can probably put down to the bottom. Then we've got the top knot. Actually, this doesn't bother me so much, these daisy chains. This is something that I don't think he's going to go in and animate so much, so let's make that a little bit. No, I don't want it to break too much, though. Because uh, I can see, I didn't like how I did the shadows on this one. I don't want it to, that probably. Let's see. I can kind of, kind of want to hide it a little. Okay, let's do that. Uh, and now it's done. That I think that's all the pivot points. I think all the pivot points are set now. That's a big rig. <laughs> that's a big rig. This is not a quick rig. Uh, this one was not a quick rig. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, I would still like to clean up those, uh, a couple of those composites are still just really big. Um, this one, the upper body, uh, what is this one? The lower body is connected to that one, so you can disconnect this. This is going to be the last. Oh, I have to do the other arm. I forgot. Uh, I've almost forgotten about the other arm. So let's put that towards the back. Um, and let's do... Let's do this. I'm going gonna, gonna to do a quick cheat. Because we just love static transformations so much. Let's use a static transformation. Let's group it. And what 
is this extra? Excellent. There we go. And we'll do, we'll call this one the FR arm, front arm. Clone selected drawings for the second arm. Let me grab a uh, and then we'll do a we'll do an arms peg. So we'll do do do. I'll use a static transformation to move this arm, but I'm gonna pretend that this is the peg between the two arms. So pretty much like right here. I'm gonna offset the far arm just a little. Um, so that's why it's not totally center. Uh, on the profile view, that peg might actually be exactly where that arm peg would be. Um, but in this case, I don't know. We don't really need to do that. I, I want to pull the arm a little bit so that it's not so far back. She's kind of got short arms, so it might be a little bit difficult, but probably not. I'm probably making excuses right now. Probably change it next week, but I'm going to have to add the hand. Uh, this one. This arm is going to be at the farthest point. And yeah, embrace the chain. <laughs> Static transformation, baby. All right, um, that's it. What? Do, why do I have this? Oh, let's change these. Let's just get all. <sighs> this is the head, hair, band, master, peg. This one is the head and hair master peg. I love I love cleaning up loose ends in a rig. Oh gosh, it's like spring cleaning for a rig. Um, we got this one too. Which I'm gonna have to figure out. We're gonna look at this next week. We're not gonna look at that now. <laughs> that's a thing. Uh, but that's looking great. That is looking really, really good. Um, the arms are now too big, but and this is probably a good. As I mentioned, the waypoints. I'm gonna find the waypoints. They're in the exact middle. So they should be around here. Oh, there they are. So tiny. grab them. This is why I don't use them too much, but it's this is so hard to grab. Uh, there we go. But look at that. It makes such a big difference. And we can do it with this one as well. Uh, but not today. <laughs> We're done. We finished <laughs> for the day. Uh, well, thanks everybody for rigging along with me. Um, this is coming. This is, she's almost done. Next, maybe next week, she's going to be pretty close to tidying up the loose ends. So, but now she's, she's animatable. She's definitely animatable. Um, yeah. It does look great. I'm excited. Uh, when you zoom in, I keep sending Luis updates, uh, and it just looks so close. Like which one is which? I mean, obviously there's a few tells, but uh, it's looking so 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 good. Especially through the render. Mabel stinks. She just farted again. She's so gassy. She's so gassy. We're gonna go to the dog park after this for sure. Um, yeah, there it is. That face texture, we gotta add that. There's a couple other paint splotches, but it's really good. It's coming along. She's missing her ear, 
So final touches, a uh, little nose highlight right here and a little bit of a discoloration happening. We'll see if we can match it, you know, do the best of our ability. Still gotta figure out how we're gonna do this pattern. Uh, but yeah, just about done. Just about done. All right. <laughs> so uh, stay tuned until next week where we might or might not finish up this rig. Who knows? This is the never ending rig along series. <laughs> it's never going to end. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope that you guys have a great night and stay tuned. All right. Bye.